This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this lesson, we're going to continue to discuss text wraps. If you'd like to follow along, go under the file menu to open and in the sample files folder, scroll down to 0903, get all wrapped up in text wraps, part two, and just click open. Now we're going to get into some of the more advanced features that are involved with text wraps. To get started, why don't we zoom in with the zoom tool on the lower left hand corner of the layout so we can have a closer look at Chris Carter's building image. Now this building was actually silhouetted in Photoshop by creating a path selecting all of the pixels within that path and copying the building and pasting it in a new layer with nothing behind it. So all of this is just transparent and it's a layered Photoshop file. Well, I wonder if there's a way that I can wrap around the contour of this building. I'm gonna select the image, go to the text wrap panel, and choose Wrap Object Shape. And you can see by default, its contour is using a clipping path in the Photoshop file. Well, I happen to know there is no clipping path, so what it's doing instead is wrapping the bounding box of the image. Not what I want. Well, let me click down on Contour Options and choose instead for the type of contour, how about Detect edges. Well, that's better. Let me just scroll over a little bit. It's wrapping around the contour of the building because this is the edges, the last transparent pixels, and it's using that shape to wrap the object. Very cool. But I wonder if there's other ways. Let me go back under the contour options type pop up and go to instead. Photoshop path. Well, it actually chose a path from the Photoshop file and it's using that to create the wrap. It's the only path in that Photoshop file, so it chose it by default. Now, let me offset the text away from the building. Because it's in a regular shape and not a rectangle, there is only one offset. It applies the offset all the way around but it's still not doing exactly what I want. I really don't like that there's a couple of words here that are just kind of hanging out on the right side of that building. I'd rather that there would be nothing here. Oh, well, is there a way to do that? Well, a lot of people don't know that if I select the image itself with my direct selection tool, you can see the wrap is actually a path. There's all of these anchor points, and I can select these anchor points. Let me just do that. I'm going to select one of them and start dragging it out towards the right. And you can see I'm making it so that the text can't fit in here. Let me do it to this line, too. I'm just going to click on one of those points and just start dragging it out. But what happens if I really mess up the path? Am I stuck with it? Absolutely not. What you can do is just press the No Text Wrap button. So you're going back to No Text Wrap and then reapply a shape wrap. When you do that, it's looking for the Photoshop path and it brings it back in again without all of those little changes that you made to it. So you can't possibly mess it up. You just unapply it and reapply it and you're back to where you started. But are there any other ways to fix this? Absolutely. In the Wrap Options section where it says Wrap to both right and left sides, maybe I only want to wrap it to the left side of this building. So let me go to the Wrap to pop-up and choose left side. Let's see if that worked. Well, it worked beautifully up over here, but look what it did to my text on the right side of the building in the next column. Because it can't wrap that to the left side, 
it's not going to wrap it at all. It just gets rid of it and pushes it up to the top of the next column. Not a good choice. Let's click down on the Wrap To pop-up again. I know right side isn't going to work because it's only going to have it in this small area over here. And both right and left side is where we started by default. And there's something called side toward spine and side away from spine. Well, that has nothing to do with this. All that's going to do is either wrap it to the center of my spread or away from it. How about largest area? Let's see what that's about. Well, now what it's doing is in each column that the wrap is affecting, it will only wrap to the largest part of that column, the largest area of the column. So it's ignoring this little piece over here. And because in my second column, that is the largest area, it's doing exactly what I want. Right now, I'd like to cover a little tip. So if you press Command-0 or Control-0 to fit your entire page in the window, we can get started. What I'm going to do is just deselect everything. And I'm going to apply Wrap Around Object Shape. And now I'm going to go to a graphic frame and just click and drag. And by default, it's wrapping the objects that I'm drawing. Very strange. Let me do it again just to make sure it's not that one object. Nope. It's doing it to every one. And that's because, let me deselect everything. When I changed my wrap, and this happens quite often, if you change your wrap with nothing selected, you're changing your default wrap to whatever it is you chose. But to fix it, all I need to do is click on No Text Wrap in the Text Wrap panel and go back to my object drawing tool and just draw away. It's not wrapping it, because I changed the defaults back to what they were originally. No text wrap. Let me just click and drag with my selection tool across all three of these objects and just hit delete. One last thing. The question I get most often from people who are switching from Quark to InDesign is, how do you turn off a wrap? Because wraps in InDesign work entirely differently than runarounds in Quark. Let me show you. I have a headline here. And my headline right now is centered between the left side of the frame and that wrap of the object from the master page object. So it's not centering the headline the way I want. I actually want to ignore the wrap so that the headline will center in the frame itself and not be affected by the wrap. Well, what I can do is go into the Object menu to Text Frame Options. And down towards the lower left-hand corner of the Text Frame Options, check Ignore Text Wrap. And you'll see that the headline now re-centered to the frame itself. Let me uncheck Preview so you can see what I mean. There it is being affected by the wrap, and when I hit preview, that's what it's doing now. It's ignoring the wrap and centering the headline to the frame itself. In the next lesson, we're going to continue to discuss text with objects.